Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, and I need to tell you why I cannot recommend an iPhone 10 outright. In fact, I don't know if I'll ever be able to recommend an iPhone 10 if it continues to be everything I see it to be. Now, I also understand I've told you the story about not wanting the first iPhone that uh, they ever produced, and I learned that you kind of have to pick it up to be able to use it. But here's the thing, I've already used an iPhone 10. How? Because I've used an iPhone every iPhone that they've released over the past 10 years. I, I, I've used pretty much all of them. I know iOS. I know the iPhone. I know how it works. I know its quirks. I know its bugs. I know its issues. I know its slop. I know the iPhone 10. So then when you layer on top of everything I already have an issue with in relation to iOS, you add on top of that the glaring UI problems with the iPhone 10 specifically, when you add on top of that the glaring usability problems, UX problems, specifically a visual UX problem, and how the UI has to accommodate and doesn't do it very well, this gigantic UX problem at the top of the screen known now as the notch. I can tell you from a distance, I I don't I don't want that. I I don't want. I don't care what features you pack into it. I don't care how fast it is. I don't care if it's got the amazing widgetosity or whatever word you want to make up. I I don't care. I, I can tell you that is just bad design. Bad. And if you don't believe me, go ahead and follow a few developers. Go ahead and follow a few uh, UX people. Go ahead and follow a few UI people. It's, get their feedback. Don't listen to me. Get their feedback. They can tell you at a distance it is not a product that just is aesthetically pleasing to some of us. I don't know how many how many of us. I don't. Uh, you know, I also have to make a note that it's not about the popularity of the product. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Uh, it doesn't matter how many people use it. That that's that's not indicative of success in in any measurement in terms of the design of the product. Successful maybe financially, right? But it's it's not something that that I think is is a marker of what makes a good product. Um, and I, 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 on that note, I, I want to, uh, you know, begin by showing you a couple of examples. One I showed you uh, in a video I just recorded about why uh, the iPhone 8 Plus, maybe my last iPhone, if not a last iOS device. Uh, I'll start with that tweet. Thank you again, uh, John, uh, for tweeting this to me this morning with Marquez Brownlee's uh, hand. Uh, the status indications flip sides when control center is pulled down question mark, with addition of nasty spacing from the top of the screen. Thank you for tagging me on this. And again, I have to give props to uh, Marquez's hand. Uh, the uh, MKBHD. Uh, this is the example. This is on the iPhone 10. So if, if you can't tell, I mean, the image is not that great. When you have, the, the without the control center pulled up or down or whatever gesture it is now, um, the, the, the status indicators for battery life and signal are over here on this side not on this side. This side has the time, but when you swipe down to get to control center, the status, uh, the symbol, the symbols for signal suddenly jump back over to the left, the classic uh, position for them. Um, you know, and then the battery stays over on the right, the classic position for it, and the Bluetooth symbol. I mean, so, so Apple didn't see this? Wait, are they going to fix it? Do they see it as something that needs to be fixed? If, if you don't think that's fit and finish, your standards are far lower than mine, like far. That is a that it's a nice UI, horrible UX. Uh, you know, uh, well, okay, I can't say nice. I say nice, not great UI, because again, you have to point out the the distance in, in padding um, with the, the the visual elements. It's incongruous. Uh, that that much is is painfully obvious. But uh, it's just the lack of detail, you know, that that that, that went into this particular example. And it's not just one iOS is, and I've said this for years, death by a thousand cuts. That's just one example that I've seen recently, specifically with the iPhone X. Uh, here's another one that was on my radar. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this up. This just looks um, unoptimized, right? This is, this is landscape mode. Who uses landscape mode? I'll just use portrait mode. Okay, but I've seen just as many issues with portrait mode. Uh, you know, not only do you have to deal with the notch here, but but look at that. Look at the bottom part here. Let's see if I can get it to reflect just right. Uh it just looks padded. It looks incongruent. It doesn't look, the elements don't look spaced well. 
and maybe the app needs to be optimized, that's possible, but I've seen similar uh, types of views in default iOS app experiences. It just looks like wasted space. I mean, who cares if you've got a, a larger screen, allegedly larger screen, or all the whole surface is a screen if you can't effectively optimize part of it? So that's just another example. Landscape mode, I'll give you, but I've seen similar examples in portrait mode. I've seen just as many wasted pixels, specifically in that bottom space, and even in the top space to accommodate the, the ear distance. It's just the ears are what they are referring to as what flanks the so called notch. And that may not even be the uh, the accurate term. So uh, here's a developer trying to figure out how to accommodate um, the uh, the landscape uh, and the notch. Now watch what happens. So which which one? Tell me which one looks better in landscape. That one. That's how Apple wants you to do it. That's that's what they say. Embrace the notch. Or this one, the one that they've basically mitigated the notch on. You tell me. I mean, I, I can tell you what I've seen. Uh, moreover, uh, here's another example here. Uh, let me hit, where's pause here? Okay, so one example. I guess I don't... Ah, need to pause at the right spot. See what I'm saying down there? There's just a lot of padded to accommodate the the, the, the lower turd. Um, <laughs> I don't know what, what you would call that. Um, the, the gesture bar to swipe up to get back to the home screen, which is going to cause issues. Anyway, like, you're, at, you know, you're scrolling through an app, you're scrolling through an app, and all of a sudden it exits? What happened? Did it crash? No, you accidentally probably hit this bar. That's... that's I can say at a distance that's probably going to happen. Apple may very well have mitigated that issue. I don't know. I, I don't I don't want to find out. Uh, but just that to me, that bottom area just looks like a lot of wasted space. It's just, just a lot of wasted space. I, it doesn't look good. Uh, in, this, in the same issue here with what I pointed out in the previous uh, screenshot example, let me see if I can pause it at the right spot. Uh, again, um, the, the same kind of wasted space here in this this bottom area of the, the menu bar just seems like a complete waste. Moreover, that uh, element up there looks very cramped. That that one right there, in fact. Let me go back and I'm just going to point out what I see. Even in the, the default view, this element here, edit, still looks kind of awkward just floating there. Landscape mode is not ideal, but uh, then again, I just don't see that this uh, uh, portrait mode looks ideal either. So that's another example. Then... Uh, did I warn everybody this is going to be a long one? It's going to be long. This is hey, I don't know if we've met. I'm Chris Perillo. I love Star Wars and talking about things that I seem to understand. Um, that's the other tweet. There's one more to get to. Oh no, that 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 may have been it. That's the third one. Oh, the other one I was going to point at uh, was just it's a parody uh, video basically demonstrating what I said may happen as you're scrolling in a web page or an app and then you suddenly flick that bar and then you exit out of the app. If you think that's a good user experience, <coughs> maybe you've known nothing apart from bad user experiences. I'm fairly confident it, it's it's going to have the propensity of happening, but I don't know. I, I can't say it has or it will. I can just say that based on what I know about gestures and, and touchscreen devices and specifically user behavior, I, I and knowing what I've known, just sometimes in trying to get uh, control center to swipe up on existing phones, and over and over and over again being able unable to do it, I think it's going to be even worse on a, a largely gesture driven uh, phone. Um. So I I I uh, I got pulled into the the Mac forums thread, as I alluded to in uh, uh, the video uh, uh, just that I just did. Um, and, and effectively, they were they were talking about the the big video that I did saying that the the iPhone 10 is a UI and UX catastrophe, uh, and I'm very happy to say many people agreed. Some people didn't. Duh, that's obvious. But uh, a lot of them just came after me personally, talking about how my voice is horrible. It is. How my videos are horrible. They are. Um, how I'm irrelevant. I am. They, they came after me personally rather than addressing the, the topic that I wanted them you know, I'd rather have people talking don't talk about me I'm a, I, I'm a nobody uh, and I even said that I came out and said that in the th I jumped into the thread but I wanted to share with you what what I wrote it's on my Facebook page because um, no one reads blogs anymore and I'm just going to read some of the points that, that I tried to make uh, First, the first one was like this isn't about ego don't talk about me talk about this talk about the iPhone 10 and how it's how what you're thinking and specifically counter my arguments with examples of why I'm not I'm not coming out of a place of fact 
or truth. This isn't so much about opinion. This is about truth. Fact. Now, truth is relative. Fact. I showed you some examples of, of how bad this can be and is. Um, so th to the second point, I'm actively pushing the conversation around iPhone 10 forward because it seems that no other Apple or tech media outlet or pundit is giving it the attention it deserves, that I believe it deserves. All I see are nerds uh, falling over themselves over this spec and that spec while glossing over the glaring issues that can't be mitigated so easily in software. Um, it, it's, it, I, I, I say this because I, I want these products to be better for me. That I need these products to be better for me. This kind of stuff does not come out of a place of hate. Uh, I hate what's being done, but because I know it could be better. It's been better. And so and then keep in mind, this is a big one. A product from Apple is perceivably more than just a single piece of hardware. It's hardware that works well with well-implemented software, design, and features inside a seamless ecosystem of experiences to create a cohesive, well-polished, well-executed experience in an archipelago of devices. If you remove usability from the equation in any of them, the ecosystem breaks. If you remove beautiful, intelligible software design from any of them, the reason you were probably drawn to Apple in the first place is moot. Without a cohesive user experience, UX, you have a completely worthless piece of hardware. Period. It's a flat fact. Try to use a good piece of hardware with a poor piece of software. Try it. It's easier to use a poor piece of hardware with amazing software than it is to use a, 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 a great piece of hardware with poor software. Case in point, the first iPhone. For years, it was you know, the iPhone got lambasted because it was under spec and it didn't keep up with this feature and that feature. But it was just well implemented and the iPhone succeeded because of that. Now the iPhone is completely different. It's gone a completely different path. It's the antithesis of the iPhone that was given to us the first time and all the way up until iOS 7. Four, solid hardware running on poor optimized software is a product that the others get made fun of for making. Remember the Moto 360? Remember everybody made fun of that little the area on the screen, the cutout? I made fun of it because I'm like, who would buy that? Why, why would you buy a circular screen with this part of it that is just non-existent? It's, it's horrific. The flat tire, who would want that? I don't want that. I, I, I question the judgment of someone who does, honestly. I do, because it's like, what'd you give up, dude? That's a... Apple users would be making fun of other companies. If Google did the notch and the floating bar and the, the just to, to bra bragging, allegedly bragging rights for having a quote unquote full screen experience, all, the whole screen, uh, Apple would be making fun of them. All, all the fans would be making fun of them. <laughs> that is why Android is inferior. <laughs> oh, jolly good, jolly good. Uh, Apple knows what they're doing. <laughs> but Apple did it. So if you were being honest with yourself, some people can't be, there's a cognitive dissonance at play that, on the scale that I just cannot comprehend. Um, Apple's doing something right now that if you were a, a believer in what Apple creates with design and, and user experience and user interfaces and amazing ecosystems, this should appall you. If you're going along with this hook, line, and sinker, you're playing into their hand. And I mean, I'm not, not saying it's nefarious, but I'm saying they're trying this. They're seeing what they can get away with. It, you know what it started with? I, mean, I can't pull it, but it started, well, with iOS 7 and software. But this, uh, this ma Magic Mouse, right, the charging port is on the bottom. Do you know how many times I've forgotten to charge this thing? Even though, yeah, it warned me, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to die, and then it dies. Because I can't use it when it's charging. Oh, but it just charges in five minutes. By the time I'm done, I'll just walk away from the computer and come back later. Who going to sit around five minutes to charge up a mouse? Ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, that, if you want to know, well, it's just the iPhone 10. No, 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 Apple's been testing the waters for years. Or maybe they haven't been testing the waters. Maybe they just, they just generally don't have a direction as far as intelligible design of hardware in conjunction with software and experience is concerned. They've, maybe they, I don't know. I legit don't know, but it's, it's, that, that's the kind of thing that you would expect, you would expect from another company. I hesitate to name any other names. 
That's not what Apple does. The, the iPhone 10 is not what Apple does. But it is now. So, uh, anyway, uh, if you made fun of other companies for really not even bold designs and, and moving the ball forward, but just questionable usability patterns and, and, and user experiences, you, you're not in the market for an iPhone 10. Because then everything that you believed before, everything that you said before about the other companies, it, it's irrelevant. You, you've lost your gravitas. It doesn't hold weight anymore. Because then you're, you're on a team. Us versus them. That's not how it works. If it's us versus them, it's the user versus the people who make things for the user. It's us versus them. Um, specs, in this sense, become irrelevant when a poorly optimized uh, software experience is on a, a, a good piece of hardware. Specs become irrelevant. User experience isn't a feature you can easily document in marketing materials. You can have the world's fastest unusable device for bragging rights, I suppose. You can have the be uh, world's best camera lens on a device that nobody wants to use or that it was just d designed poorly. If you want a poorly designed product, and, and apparently a lot of people do, and I'm sure a lot of people will, I think it says a lot about you. I, I think it says a lot about where you place a value in design. To me, it's everything. If it's not marketing, you know what good marketing is? A damn good product. That's what marketing is. Five. We didn't just, yeah, I'm on five. I think I got 15 points here. We didn't just get this iPhone 10 nightmare overnight, as I uh, suggested here. Uh, I have a lot of asides, as you can tell. Uh, Apple has been relatively directionless with software design since the first beta of iOS 7. It never gets better with revisions. It never gets addressed with revisions. We just see more features piled on top of, as of yet, polished features. The result is a cacophony of well-documented slop, misaligned elements, dropped frames and scrolls, unpolished animations, et al. Um... You know, and it gets faster. Sometimes it gets faster. Sometimes the, the slop gets faster to see. It's true. You know, on certain devices, like with the ProMotion iPad that I'm using here, um, it, the slop is still there. It still drops frames. just drops frames faster. Uh, six. This is not a tempest in a teapot. The, the whole, why is Chris stirring up trouble? You a troublemaker. You go back, you go back to your t talking about anything that I agree with. That's the funny thing. People say, they get mad. They say, well, the reason why you're doing this and your channel's this and you're, 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 you're this, that, and the other thing is because you don't talk about tech anymore. So then I talk about tech. You need to shut down, sit down and shut up. Okay. This isn't a tempest in a teapot. This isn't clickbait. This isn't Chris venting for the sake of venting. This is Chris saying, dude, the emperor has no clothes. Chris has been talking about, I'm, okay, I shouldn't talk about myself in the third person. I've been talking about this stuff for years hoping it would get better by venting i've solved problems maybe not from apple uh but i can tell you google has listened to me at least once i got the the 15 frames per second restriction on ios lifted into a full 60 frames per second a few years ago by sending a tweet not even to google it's just that then an engineer caught it and said yeah we restricted the 15 we restricted google maps on ios to 15 frames per second be, to save battery life. What are you talking about, battery life? This is a couple years ago. I'm like, D -d -d lift it. It's a horrible experience, 15 frames per second. The very next revision, minor revision, didn't even get announced in the release notes or anything. Google Maps now runs at least 60 frames per second because I took the time to vent. If you want a 15 frame per second product, knock yourself out. I don't. I wasn't looking for anything. I just wanted a better product. And I got one. Uh, because I... You don't make products better by being complacent. You don't make products better by not stirring the pot. You make products better when you perceive them to be, there to be issues and you bring them up. It's not about uh, Chris you know, needing to lay off the coffee because this, by the way, is, is green tea. I'm not drinking coffee at the moment. Haven't been for a few months since going vegan. Uh, it, it's, it's about just being passionate and understanding a good user experience and knowing where it fails and falls short. And everything, everything in me is screaming that this iPhone 10, as they've laid it out, as they've promoted it, is definitely not for me. 
I believe it's a disaster. Even if it's a success in the marketplace, I still believe it's a usability disaster. I still believe it's just it's it's replete with all the iOS slop with things piled on top of it. <sighs> this is intended to be Apple's new direction. This isn't a tempest in a teapot. If that doesn't wake you up, then I'm not sure you're someone who appreciates what a good user interface or user experience can be. Certainly, the UI and UX experts I've been following for some time recognize this as a train wreck for unknown re I mean, for infinite reasons. Unless they're so invested in their belief in what Apple once was that they can't see that the emperor has no clothes. Um, it, 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 you don't have to believe me. You just Oh, it's just Chris Perillo. He's just going to spout off. Fine. Don't believe me. Don't listen to me. Don't read this. Don't. Go do your own research and then decide for yourself whether the experts are wrong. There's a whole lot of that going around lately. Yeah, you can't believe the experts because, you know, apparently they're elite because they know their subject matter. Yeah, that's a product of good education there. Seven, if Apple is pushing the notch, as seen in their developer documentation, as a key visible differentiator, then suggesting that UX and UI are taking a backseat to, visual, uh, to visuals that serve no purpose in the device's function. Um, I'm sorry, they are suggesting. I, I misspoke as, as what I wrote. They're suggesting that the notch is more important as a key differentiator in branding an Apple-branded device than the usability of said product, in the design of said product, in the UI on said product. Um, they are all taking a back seat because of branding? What? I mean, I get it. That's the human interface guidelines like update saying embrace the notch. No. I've said it in social. I, I mean, very. I'm trying to keep language clean here, but f the notch. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not sorry. No, I don't accept that. Not from you. Not from anybody. I don't care who. You could slap a company X title on. I'd still say, what the hell are they thinking? I hope whatever they're smoking in California is legal. Or it's, it's just. I said the same thing about other platforms and other products and other companies too. But that's the thing. This is this is not a it's not a temporary thing. Until they can solve the problem of getting all that stuff under the screen and workable and usable, we're gonna have to we. You potentially are going to have to deal with a notch. I'll have none of it. Um because of a, a key differentiator in, in 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 their products versus they don't want it to look like that. Like, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to say something that either is going to annoy the hell out of you, just like everything else I say, or it's going to start to make some sense. The difference between an iPhone and a non-iPhone isn't the hardware. It's the software. Ask the app developers. How many of them are there? Millions? What, what makes the iPhone the iPhone? Ain't the hardware. It's the software. It's always been the software. The hardware is merely a platform for the software, the platform itself. If if the software was not good, do you think uh, the, do you think a great piece of hardware would have taken off? I think history has shown that that's usually not the case. If the software is horrible, no one wants the hardware. Apple's tilting into that realm by 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 putting UX and UI in their software in a completely different realm to sell more hardware. They've got it backwards. The, the, the entire ethos that Steve handed to them was just the opposite of what they're doing right now. The opposite. Why does that upset me? Because th these are things that we use. These are things that we want to use. These are unusable things. The key differentiator between an iPhone and an iPhone has not been the hardware so much as it's been the software. Apple created a foundation suitable for developers. On that point, number eight, developers are going to catch hell for this, not Apple. They're going to see the complaints, not Apple. You can only mitigate the brackish nature of the notch and the floating turd at the bottom to indicate that you swipe up to or do something to get back to the home screen. Uh, you can only mitigate that so much. You can't hide it in every app with Apple's intended approach to the problem that they created, Apple themselves. Then, even if you do, uh, you, you've got other issues that you're, you're, you're going to, to, to run into. 
I mean, even if you can mitigate it. For example, I, a lot of the, the, the response, this is a very short-sighted response to the perceived shortcomings of uh, the iPhone X. Uh, they said, well, you can, you can zoom out on the video so the notch isn't there. I'm like, okay, but that's not the only landscape scenario. Video is not the only landscape scenario. Well, I don't use landscape all that much. But in, even in portrait mode, there's a lot of poorly designed elements floating around and, and creating very awkward padding and spacing and design. And it's just incongruent and not well done. Some things have been well done. Like the rounded corners, I mean, they, they, I mean, wow, that's really neat. But everything else... <sighs> okay. Y you try to hide that in every single experience and every possible uh, configuration you, you can that Apple gave you. And I'm sorry, you can't just say, well, I just don't, I won't use landscape mode. So you're buying a product that has landscape mode enabled, but you won't use it. Well, you know, I can, I can mitigate it. You can in that app, not another. Wait until you play your first game with the notch. Yeah, maybe it'll melt away. Maybe it will. Notch is still there. Y you know what? That, that The graphics underneath, the, the, the beauty underneath that hideous intrusion is still there you take a screenshot and it'll it'll be there so you, so you can get something in a screenshot but you can't actually get it in the screen <sighs> nine you're using a full screen iphone so-called full screen iphone that doesn't give you the full screen 10 apple's coasting on cultural loyals uh, laurels i apologize let me try that again. Apple's coasting on cultural laurels in the hopes that people will just learn to love it. Even my wife said, well, I don't I don't have a choice. That's the new iPhone. I'm like, yeah, but they also have the, the, the 8 plus and the 8. But everyone's focused on the 10 as the big... I'm like, but it's... But the other ones are just as good, if not better, in so many ways. Usability being one of them. Uh, the iPhone 8 plus goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the 10 on so many of the hardware features. Not all of them. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, uh, there, I wouldn't even say it's Apple's miscommunication. It's a cultural, it's a cultural norm that the 10 is the latest now, not the eight, the eight's old school. And I think that that plays in Apple's favor. It plays against you as a user who, who may not understand. It plays against someone who doesn't understand. They see the 10 as the beauty product. And that's the thing is it's it, of the three, the most hideous the, the the wrongest one, not because of, of Face ID, not because of you know any t technologies they put into it, but because of the usability of the product being in question. They wouldn't buy it from another company. Why are they buying it from Apple? Maybe, maybe you can answer that question. The only way I can see it is it's just it's it's they're resting on their cultural laurels. I'm not making a problem saying that. Uh, 11. It's not a it's not a question of whether or not the iPhone 10 will flop. In fact, it probably won't. People don't know what they want, and they're accustomed to good experiences from Apple. Instead, iPhone 10 is a flop by design. How it was designed, how it was implemented out of the gate. Could they mitigate it in the software? Yes, but we've been down this path. Will they? I don't know. Never buy a product on what it could be or what it might be. Buy it for what it is. I've been saying that for years as well. You don't know if they're going to fix it. They don't know if they're going to fix it. They don't know if it's going to be a big enough issue. And if it's not an issue, why fix it? Even if it's antithetical to everything that brought the product to where it is today. Popularity is never an indicator of quality. Just because more people buy it doesn't mean that it was a well-done product. Twelve. It's not a matter of having a wait and see approach. If you can't see what is clearly visible in Apple's very own demos and documentation before having the device in hand, there's probably no hope. Uh, like even, I don't need to touch one to have used an iPhone all these years, to have had bad experiences with questionable design, to see mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake in documented evidence, proof, flat facts, to say this is this is wrong on top of wrong. This is insult to injury. And it could be better. I just want it to be better. That's it. That's all. That's all. That's all I want. That's all I want. That is literal, literally all I want. Because then I could go back to talking about things that I actually enjoy. Like Star Wars. Love talking about this stuff. Love, love, love.
This is a fundam fundamental matter of usability outright. This is not a question. The OLED screen will be amazing, potentially. There, there's a question of whether it actually will be or not. Uh, some uh, screen uh, folks, uh, screen experts, have suggested it could be a diamond-patterned pen tile, uh, which may not work out very well, after all, for N reasons. Um, the OLED screen will be amazing, potentially, and amazingly stunted by an unsymmetrical design. Uh or inclusion, whatever you want to call the, the notch or whatever the, the proper word for it is. Even, they call it the sensor array. Uh, okay. The permaturd. Even in portrait mode, it stands out as well does, uh, as does the lower software pill-shaped uh, graphic and not in a good way it, it, as, as a branding, uh, you know, uh, presence or as, even as a functional presence. The function is, this is, this is where I get really annoyed. Like, it's not there for a reason. It's there for a reason to, to give people face ID and this amazing new technology, but it doesn't blend into the hardware. It stands out like a sore thumb. Like, the, the, the function doesn't follow form. The, the function flies in the face of form. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not cogent. Like, the feature is... But, but the implementation isn't. It's not the feature. It's the implementation. Don't justify... This is 13. I'm almost done, I swear. Don't justify your... Oh, maybe. <laughs> Don't justify your decision to buy the iPhone 10 by minimizing its glaring oversights or dismissing absolutes. You're not doing yourself any favors. If you accept this simply because it's what Apple has made for you, then you're not doing yourself any favors. You deserve a better product... I'm saying it about you, even if you happen to disagree with me, even if you hate me. You deserve a better product from Apple, you or anybody. Now listen to the people who are trying to make it better for you. Demand it when you plunk down your money on anything. 14. Let me put it to you this way. If you thought the camera lens bump was an issue, you know, on, the, on previous iPhones or other manufacturer's devices, or that the lack of a headphone jack was a problem, then this is magnitudes worse. You can ignore the bump. You're using a phone. Are you staring at the camera lens? Maybe if you're cleaning it, but by and large, are you staring at it? No. You could, you could even ignore the lack of a port. It's not there. It's not, there's nothing to see, right? Until you actually need to plug in headphones and you may be using wireless headphones at that point or you've got a converter cable. It could be mitigated. But you simply cannot ignore the screen, software design, or general usability. Good luck ignoring the screen with Face ID. <laughs> it's, I'm sure someone will figure it out. They'll like figure out how to Face ID their butt. Can't wait for that, uh, you know, to, to go viral. Uh, 15. I've wasted so much of my time, energy, and patience on these matters, and I am the least qual... I'm here to tell you, I am the least qualified person to be pushing back in the first place. Someone quoted uh, Steve Jobs in, in the Mac Rumors thread that, that inspired the post here. That, and I'm paraphrasing, Steve once said, you don't have to be an expert to recognize something is bad. I'm paraphrasing because even he was paraphrasing, but... It, Steve Jobs also said the customer doesn't it's not the customer's job to know what they want. And all of these jobsisms, all these maxims are very much still at play because it's the very reason we find ourselves at this frustrating point in time. Yeah, I don't want to be the champion. I don't want I'm not saying I'm a champion. I'm I don't want to I'm tired of tilting at windmills, but I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be leading this. I'm not leading it. I'm just talking about it. I don't want to be the poster boy for this stuff any more than I wanted to be the poster boy years ago for talking about similar types of problems from other companies. I don't, I, it's not what I want to do, but nobody else is doing it. Or if they are, they're not doing it, they're not doing it loud enough. And I realize I can be loud. Um, but I'm just saying, how, how are people okay with this? I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. And, and maybe I know too much. Maybe that's my problem. But like I said, I, I've, I've been somewhat, uh, not vindicated, but um, uplifted by seeing the reaction that I got. Largely positive. Of course, you, you also have detractors who just don't like my voice or what I'm you know saying outright. Or, you know, maybe they have a stake in it, like monetarily. Um, you know, the success of these things. Um, I do I do not. Uh, the, uh, 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 by and large, a lot of people are with me on this. Not everybody. And, and, and granted, a lot of the people that I would rather talk to are the normies. I'd rather talk to people like my wife. Um, 
you know, about this kind of stuff and to help them rather than nerds and geeks like you and me. I don't want to talk to the techies. I don't, I mean, I, I like most of y'all, but you guys may or may not get it. They absolutely don't. That's why my audience has never been the nerds, never been the geeks. It never has been, unless we're talking about like Star Wars nerds and geeks. That's my audience. That's my community here. That's my community. The nerds and geeks are not my community. Like the tech nerds and geeks, not my community. Never have been, never will be. My community, if, if, I'm going to, if I'm going to offer any direction or advice, it's to the people who don't see it, the people who don't understand. It's my job to be the ombudsman. It's my position to be able to explain to them, look, this is what works. This is what doesn't work. This is why. So I, I, it, it, I, I, wish, I wish I had the platform that some of these people did because, damn it, I would use it to, 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 to help, to educate, to make things better. So they, 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 they don't get trapped in marketing speak. So that they don't see the worst potential choice in this new array of products as the only choice. I just can't recommend the iPhone 10 for all the aforementioned reasons. And, and, and I've already, I mean, I don't want to repeat myself from the things that I've said in two or three other videos that I've recorded over the past day. You know, I, 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 one response I get is, you know, the iPhone has been boring or, the, or well, if they, if they hid the notch, you know, or, I, I hate that word. Uh, I also hate permaturity, even though I kind of coined it, the, 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 the sensor array, uh, it, 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 it's not boring. The phone screen is not boring. If they hit it, it would, I, I'd be like, I'd be kind of like, okay, I think the 10 is worth considering, but that they didn't, it's like, eh, it's just one more thing. Um, boring. I'll take boring. If, 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 if the, the, this inclusion is exciting, I don't want exciting. I want usable. <clears throat> I don't want the latest feature. I want a well-implemented feature. I don't need the latest spec. I need a well-implemented spec. And I've always been that way. This is not a new me. This is like bleh, me as long as I can remember me in the 44 years I've been on this planet. I'll take boring over visually unbalanced. I'll take it over uns unsymmetrical every single time. I'll take polish. I'll, I'll take a well-polished feature over 10 features that weren't working well, that don't work well, that don't look well, that don't integrate well. Just one. Give me one good one. It's boring. Boring. It would look boring. It would look boring. It would look like everything else. No. It'd still be an Apple product. You know why? Because it's running Apple software. The only uh, company that can run Apple software is Apple. That's what makes it a good product. Boring. Give me a break. You may be bored, but that's not boring. It's functional. It's, it's aesthetically pleasing. It's balanced. It looks good. Is it everywhere we want to be? No. Is it going to change in the future? Absolutely. That's how technology works. But you know what? You don't have to get the latest thing. You don't have to get the newest thing. You don't even you you don't even have to you you don't even have to accommodate it. The technology is always going to move forward. This is obviously going to change. We're not talking about the future. We're talking about now. The choice you have to make now. The choice you may need to be making over the next couple of weeks. You may think I'm crazy. You've probably already written me off. Hell, that probably happened when I was first complaining about iOS 7. That was, let's see here, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, five years ago, if you do the math. I'm horrible at math. <laughs> at least that long. I'm just... No, but Chris is just Don Quixote. Chris, you're just seeing things. I don't see it. It doesn't exist. You're, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Maybe now you get it what I've been saying all this time, that Apple's quality control is gone. Their systems have changed. I think there's been a brain drain at Apple. I don't have an imp any empirical evidence, but there's no other explanation in, in terms of what they're doing with software. So I, I, I've got a couple other points here, but I've already made these points, so I don't want to belabor them. Um, thanks again for watching these very long videos. I've got a lot to say, and I can't just break them down into three-minute chunks. Dude, if you want something brief, go to Twitter. It's 140 characters, okay? You want short videos, go to another channel. That ain't, that ain't me. That's not my channel, okay? Like, I'm not going to apologize for being me. You don't like it? Okay. But I can't just bite-sized chunks. I can't...
not it's th- that's not me. I know it's better suited for a podcast. So turn me on and and then carry your phone around, not looking at it, especially if you have a damn notch. I love you. I appreciate you, and may the force be with you.